Hello, and welcome back to The House From Hell. This seems to be a repeat episode. We are here because we are replacing some sockets, but I wanted to do a deep dive video for you about safe isolation procedure, because I am just about to isolate these sockets before I start changing the face covers. And something that's very close to my heart and important as an electrician is working safely. Safe isolation procedure is all a part of that. So Martindale Electric have very kindly sent me a safe isolation kit that I wanna show off to you guys. And I'm gonna just unbox it now. I've not seen this, so I don't know what's gonna be in here. Ooh, how exciting. So we've got, oh, look at that, I like that. Right, so we've got this. This is a proving unit. So that's got its own little case on the side of the tester, which is pretty cool. And then in here, presumably, is the, the test equipment. Oh yes, Martindale. Now Martindale makes some of the best voltage indicators on the market. They've been doing it for donkey's years. They've been around for a long time, a British company, and they make great quality products. In fact, you might well have heard an electrician call one of those plug-in testers a Martindale. It's a bit like calling a vacuum cleaner a Hoover because Martindale, when it comes to safe isolation, they're kind of the go-to brand that everyone knows about. And I'm really excited to try out these products today. So we've got this voltage indicator and I'm just gonna... I love doing that. So this is used to test to see whether a circuit is live or dead. So we use this to prove dead. And these, see there's no probes there. You might think, well, how do you test the thing? There's no, you can't see any probes. These are retractable probes. So you see that? You push them in and just the right amount of metal will be exposed in order to get a contact and, and keep it safe. So you can push these into the terminals and there's no chance of you ever being able to actually touch the live probe, which is really, really clever. They've got a nice length on them and it just feels like really good quality, this. So, so far, first impressions are very, very good. Now, the other part of this, which I showed you, is the proving unit, which if we flip this over, this is the proving unit, which it creates a voltage um, of 440 volts AC, but it does it from batteries. So it's a way of simulating a live installation in order to test your tester, to make sure that when you test to prove dead, that your tester hasn't broken in between. So we'll show you that process, but this is the proving unit that they've sent us and we'll pop these batteries in and then we'll see how it works. So pop this back in the case now, because this is designed to just be kept in the case. It keeps it nice and clean. And you've got these little holes where you can just um, dab on there and test your tester. So let's have a little go and see if this works. Yeah, so we've got voltage, look at that. So it says 400 volts there, and that's it. And when we test that, it's got this little high voltage light that comes on as well, which is really cool. So we'll put that back in the, in the bag for a moment. We're gonna use this to follow the safe isolation procedure, but I wanna show you what's in the other bag because that's the second part of safe isolation procedure that probably gets forgotten about more is this. So what is in this bag? Aha, uh -huh. we have lockouts. So this is the full Martindale lockout kit, right? which has got all the different types of lockouts that you might need to safely isolate a circuit, but then lock it off. It's important not just to turn the power off, but to lock it off, because in a property like this, where I'm working, for example, there's a builder working in the background, and he could quite easily get fed up because his radio's been turned off, and think, oh, maybe the power's tripped, and if I've turned the circuit breaker off for these sockets, he might not know that I'm working on them. Guess what he might do? He might come along and jollily reset the circuit breaker, thinking that his radio will come back to life and instead his electrician will lose his life. I say that lightheartedly, but it's actually serious. That kind of stuff does happen in the real world. People die of electric shock every year. Lots of people, in fact. If you look at the statistics, you will see that it's quite shocking how many people in our industry and how many people in the world in general die from electrocution every year. Doing our best to get into a routine of working safely when we're working around something as dangerous as electricity, which can take your life in the blink of an eye, 
And so we have to have awe and respect for it and we have to be really careful around it. And that's where safe isolation procedure comes in. So the idea behind this is you find the right one that fits with the various circuit breakers that you, you have in the, in the board where you're working. So in this case, it's just a domestic board. So these are, a lot of these are designed for big commercial panels. But I'm sure in here we have somewhere, a little small one like this, yeah, something like that, or maybe even something like this which will be ideal for locking off these Hager breakers. And I'll show you what this is all about as well, because uh, this is a multi-lockout. If I can get it open, there we go. This is a multi-lockout, which means that if several people are working on one circuit, you can put several locks in there, and only when the last electrician has finished working will it be able to be energized. We've got a padlock here, and this padlock will fit on all of the various locks. And again, you know, with Martindale, I know that there's these real cheapo kits that you can get online from Amazon and stuff, but this feels like good quality. And I prefer, for something that is gonna potentially save my life, I prefer to spend a bit of money and invest in a good quality kit. And this certainly feels like good quality. Another great thing about the Martindale lockout kit is these. These are the Alive cards, five fail-proof steps to safe isolation. And it's just a great little reminder of exactly what steps you need to take in order to perform proper safe isolation procedure. You've got a pack of these cards and on the back, it gives you this approved kit. Before starting, make sure your equipment meets all legal safety standards. Lockout. Identify the point of isolation, lock it off and place warning tags on to the equipment. Initial proof. Test your voltage indicator against the proving unit to make sure it's working properly. Voltage test. Use your voltage indicator to confirm dangerous voltage levels are not in the circuit you're about to work on. And then ensure. Proof and retest the voltage indicator against the proving unit to ensure it's functional before working on the circuit. And if you want to know more information, check out martindale-electric.co.uk or check out their social media. So what we're gonna do is, we've talked through the theory of it now, let's do the practice. We'll jump in, we'll test this socket, see if it's live, then we'll go to the board, turn it off, prove that it's dead, lock it off, job done. If I make any mistakes, you guys will let me know in the comments, and hopefully by the end of this video, we'll all be convinced to work a little bit safer. And maybe you wanna buy yourself a Martindale test kit. Let's have a go. Okay, so we're gonna carefully unwrap this. This has been all taped up because of the um, decorating that's been happening. The builder slash decorator is very kind to us. He's a lovely chap. And he decided that he would properly wrap up all the sockets for us. Okay, so carefully unwrap this. I think it's live, but I'm not sure. So let's do a test and find out. Now when you're testing, there is a way to do it. Apparently you're supposed to put your contact on the least dangerous conductor first. So in this case, it would be the CPC and then on the live or line conductor. And you can see that we've got 200 volts, so it is live. The reason we do it this way is because if I put my tester on the live conductor first, the end of this probe then becomes live because the power is traveling through it. And if I touched that, I could actually get a shock. So it's better to do the least dangerous conductor first and then the dangerous one. So we've got neutral to line, we've got two, 200 volts. We've got line to C, uh, CPC to line, 200 volts. And then we'll do neutral to earth as well, just to, just to check, but that should be nothing. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, we've proved that this is live. Now we need to isolate it. So let's go to the board and we'll turn the circuit breaker off and we will lock it off. Right, so it's a bit dark in here, so sorry if the video quality's dropped slightly. This is the board, we have no lighting in here because this room is not finished yet. We've not labelled everything up yet, which is not particularly helpful, but actually in a way it's kind of good because it shows like, okay, we've got to go through the process of figuring out which circuit does what now. Um, there is one that's off, so just a little note, if you ever see a breaker that's off, don't just turn it on <laughs> because somebody might be working on it and, and have not done safe isolation procedure or well, there might be bare wires hanging out the end or something but really that I think that's probably just a spare and that's why it's off but I'm not 100% sure and anyway somebody should have just locked that off and then the, you know anyone who works here would know that that should be left off so that's a little boo-boo there 
from whoever was working in here last. But what we're gonna do probably is just go one by one through these and just turn them off until the kitchen sockets go dead. So I'm gonna turn this one off first and then have a little look. Um, that one. Make sure we get the right one so that they're safe. We found the right one, so it's this one here. So now what we've got to do, it would be handy uh, if Hager made those little magnets that hold the flap up, that would be really handy. So I think this is the one that we need. It's a lock seven, so it's got a little number four on the side of it as well, and it fits perfectly. What we do is just screw this little retaining screw down like that. Okay, that's tight now. So nobody can actually turn that breaker on now. You see, if I, even if I want to, I can't turn it on. So then we've got two options. If it's just me who's working on it, all I need to do is put this lock and I've got to do a tag. So we call it lock out, tag out, basically. You lock it and you tag it so that they know, like whoever's working here next, they know who to contact about the fact that it's locked off. So what I can do is put my lock there like that put my tag in the lock and then click and turn. That is locked out, tagged out, and I'll write my name and details on there. We just need to test it to make sure it's definitely um, dead at the other end. So this is the other option, which is where you've got multiple electricians working on one circuit. You use this, it's called a multi-lockout, and you put that through and then I mean, these are designed for, for larger breakers, really, so it's quite rare that you'll ever have this in a domestic setting. But you put that on there, then you put your lock in, and then say Corey's working here as well on that same circuit, he can put his lock in. And if I finish before him, I can't turn the circuit on still because his lock is still in there. And I just put that there, twist this, and we're all locked out and good to go. As I say, important to write your name and department on there or maybe stick your phone number on there and it's got an expected completion date as well. So that's just for like, you know, imagine if you say, okay, I'm gonna be finished by the end of the day. So you put that date on there and then if you forget to take it off for some reason, they'll see that and go, okay, he's obviously forgotten to take it off. Let me call him and find out. And you might say, oh, yeah, I'm really sorry. I forgot to take it off you can come back and just unlock it. So it just avoids like inconvenience for people if you do forget. That's it basically. So let's go to the other end now and prove dead and then we can get stuck in and do some work. So now we're back in the light. Uh, let me tell you what to do with the key. That's another important step. Put the key in your pocket. Don't leave it lying around so anyone can just go and unlock it. That's an important thing that we got taught at college. So stick that key in my pocket. And the other thing I forgot to mention in there as well, but it's very important is with this new world of home working, Corey mentioned it in a video the other day, step one of safe isolation procedure actually is permission. Always get permission from the homeowner before you start turning circuits off. So here obviously it's an empty house, so it's not really an issue, but um, important if you're working in a house or a business where somebody needs the power, make sure you get permission and make people aware before you start turning things off. So now we're going to test here and we're going to do our various combinations of tests. So we'll do CPC to line, so we've got no power. We're going to do neutral to line, no power, neutral to CPC, no power. So that's good. But how do we know that our tester is not broken and that's why it's not showing a reading? Imagine it got damaged in between us working in there and coming here. Well, simply that is what the proving unit is for. We just bob the tester on there and you can see that we've got power. So we know that our tester is working and we can be confident then that that reading that we took, that it was dead, it's actually correct. So we now know and, and can feel confident that this circuit is isolated, it's dead, it's safe for us to work on and it's locked off at the other end so nobody else can come along and re-energize it. And that means we can just work safely with peace of mind knowing that we're not gonna be electrocuted or receive an electric shock and it's safe for others to work around us too so very very important little procedure and I just thought it'd be good to share it with you let me know all your thoughts in the comments below do you do safe isolation procedure do you not bother have you been shocked recently 
Do you know somebody else who has? Let me know all your stories in the comments below. I'd love to know your opinions as always. And massive thanks to Martindale uh, for sponsoring this video today. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get the whole kit here, the safe isolation, lockout kit, the test uh, instruments, the proving unit. I'll leave a link below where you can get all of that. Thanks for watching and have a great day.